Here we go. Put fish on, guys. time down here um, my dogs just rest in the background hang out with me there's Novi um, yeah so uh, today I'm just gonna do a, a quick little video um, on how to use a water temperature gauge um, and the importance of water temperature gauges why every active salmon angler out there um, should be carrying one on them um, they're only like you can, you can buy really cheap ones for ten dollars, five dollars, um, a TFO one for seventeen bucks, a little lanyard thingy for another couple bucks. Uh, you know, other way, twenty twenty five dollar investment for the higher end gauges, and you've got an accurate way of checking the water temperatures um, in each of the locations that you're fishing. So it's very important um, when we're fishing for salmon and, and same for trout as well. I mean, if you want to catch more fish, uh, you, you need to understand the fish and you need to understand the species more as a whole. And that's something that I'm always kind of progressing towards and, and I, I know I'm always sort of learning. So um, salmon are a cold water species. That's why when the water gets warm, they're holding in the cold water refuges. Refuges. It's not refugees, it's refugees. Ah. <laughs> Anyways, they're holding up where the cold water is. Um, for salmon species, they like that, that water temperature uh, to be below 20 degrees. Um, one big factor to, to cold water is the colder the water is, the more oxygen that's actually in that water. And fish still need oxygen to breathe, um, you know, so that's why we'll find them sitting in you know the mouth of rapids um, where you see the bubbles and you see the everything like that you see that the oxygen is being pumped into the water more um, so on and so forth so when we're fishing for fish we might see fish rolling spawning or not spawning but we're, we're gonna see them rolling jumping um, you know a, a little bit of everything sometimes they're out there but sometimes they're not taking um, sometimes that's due to water temperature you know, like sometimes you fish for them for a few hours in the morning and the bite is on. Uh, lots of action, lots of play, and it's like that sun comes up, you fish for another hour or two, and then nothing. It's just like a dead zone, like there's no fish in the river. The salmon are still there, but they've gone to that zombie state because the water has gotten too warm. They know that they're no longer in play mode because the water is not cold enough for them to recover, to have energy, to have oxygen, to basically be able to breathe properly. Um, as soon as it gets, it gets warm, they, they go into survival mode. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do really quickly here is just pull up uh, my editor. And uh, I actually have a video here that I've been working on. Uh, just doing a little bit of editing on it. And um, we'll, we'll just kind of go over. This is me using it, the temperature gauge. And um, we'll just do a little bit of play-by-play of, -play, uh, of me using the gauge. Uh, so this is me fishing at Coryville. Um, I just got this gauge th th that day. This is last Thursday. Uh, it's a water temperature gauge from uh, TFO. Pretty simple. On the bottom of it there, I think I showed on the camera here. There's that little, see those little hole, that little hole on the bottom? It's just like a little tiny probe that will collect water in it. And that's what's taking the temperature. Um, <coughs> nice day fishing there. It's, I mean, the water temperature today, that day that I took it, was terrible. That's why I didn't stay up that night. 
Uh, this is last Thursday. The water temperature uh, on the main river, the main southwest channel up where I was, was 24 Celsius. That's sad. All right, so I've got like, mine on a little lanyard thingy now, so I'll never forget it. It's always on my way. This is always there. This is coming from something that's going to become law to me. That's something you're going to pay attention to a lot. So, um, yeah, we'll let my dog for playing in the background there. <laughs> Border collies are never at rest. Uh, okay, so what I'm doing here is I'll mention a couple things. Okay, so when you're taking temperatures, there's a few different things that you'd like to know here. Um, when you're taking the temperature, you probably want to put that down a couple inches. And you want to leave it into the water, not just for like, you know, five, ten seconds. That thing's been sitting in your pocket. It's been sitting beside your body. It's warm. So give it the right time to acclimatize to the conditions that it's in. Um, let the gauge there go. I've got that thing gauged a lot deeper there now. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm sticking it in there a good amount of time there. Um, I'm taking what I would consider to be a subsurface water temperature. So what, what I mean is that if you kind of imagine like if a pool is five, let's say a pool is 10 feet deep, well the first three feet of water, um, you're gonna be significantly warmer than the bottom seven feet. Okay, hold on. Rex, Nova, you guys behave, I'm trying to do a video. Oh, chaos here. <laughs> the editing. So that whole video plays through is what happens. Okay. You made me lose my train of thought, Rex and Nova. Children, behave. All right. Um, so back what I was talking about is I was taking um, temperatures here. We're talking about subsurface temperatures. Uh, so the first couple feet are actually going to be warmer than the bottom. So that's why in, in a salmon holding pool, you're going to see salmon sometimes in the warm summer months holding in the bottom of the pool. Um, okay, pretty basic. Good information to know, though. Um, taking a subsurface temperature is going to let you know if these fish are going to be in a in that in the in the zone to take. Right? Um, I don't know if that's the right way of saying it, but here's here's a right way of thinking about it at least. Um, we're fishing flies, subsurface flies. I fish bugs, so I fish subsurface wet flies, um, floating lines. Okay, your line's not going that deep. You're not. We're not fishing sinking lines in the middle of the summer. That's not how we traditionally fish salmon. We're not. Hopefully, there's nobody out there jigging salmon, fishing with full sinking lines and deep sanding pools. Um, we, we need these salmon to come up and take in that subsurface zone, um, <clears throat> in order to take our flies. So, if the subsurface water temperature isn't great, um, you know, it's a really good indicator that fishing's not going to be great. So on another kind of side of things, and, and w another reason as to why the temperature is so important is the, is for the fish. Um, again, we got to remember we're in a catch and release fishery. There's no retention for Atlantic salmon. If we ever want a hope of retention, we need to protect the species as much as we can right now. Um, somebody had a comment on Facebook there some some week, sometime this week. Anyways, I liked it. It was good. It was. Um, if we don't follow the rules, we have anarchy. So we have rules for a reason. Uh, protect these fish as much as you can. So what I'm saying is that, all right, if we're out here fishing and we're pushing the limits of how warm the water temperature is and we do get a taking salmon, be very cautious, you know? Don't be playing that fish out for 10, 15 minutes. If you get the fish in, try to land it quickly. Uh, once you have that fish in, put it in the water right away. Like if you're taking a picture of it, a two second photo is, is, is all it needs to be. It should be dripping wet. I recommend just keeping the fish wet. Like don't, you know, it's awesome. Be proud of the fight, be proud of the story, not so much the photo, right? Um, videos are also better than pictures because what you can do with a video is just take a screenshot. And just with simple cell phones, stuff like that, um, <clears throat> you'd be amazed at the quality. I've gotten some really, really, really good footage. Um, it's just from this year and from last year. All my filming is done on my iPhone. I'm gonna be upgrading to a, a, a GoPro eventually. But um, yeah, guys, pay attention to the water temperatures. Um, carry a gauge with you. Uh, using the gauges are cheap. I picked mine up from Sid Match It um, at the Trout Fork Fly Shop. So yeah. 
All right, guys. Um, so yeah, we uh, that was pretty much it. This is uh, kind of my first time playing around with doing one of these videos from home. I I like them um, because of work. I'm not able to get up on the river as much as I want to. You know, two days a week at most, uh, if I can afford it. But uh, I have a week's vacation coming up. I have my vacation from July 11th uh, right till the end of the 17th. So I got seven days to fish. Um, I'm going to be on the water a lot. But anyways, that being said, um, I'd like to do more of these videos. Um, you guys let me know what informational videos you would like to see. Um, my editing skills are getting a lot better. I also need some uh, participants and some people to video because I do fish a lot on my own. Um, you know, I like to hook fish, so. But uh, my plan is the uh, once I get to my limit, if I do limit out, if I get my two hook fish limit, then I spend the day talking to people, uh, trying to get interviews done. Um, I'd like to pe know people's opinion about salmon fishery, what it means to them, you know, how they got started. I think one thing I really want to hear is I want to hear everybody's first story um, of the first time you ever hooked an Atlantic salmon. I think that's going to be a recurring theme that I'll do. Um, yeah, he's, he's getting everybody's story uh, from the people that I talk to. So if you're somebody that sees me wandering around with a video camera on the river, uh, feel free to say, what's up, sports? And uh, yeah, I, anybody who sees me on the river, you know I like to talk. It's uh, Be careful if you say what's up, because you might be stuck in a conversation with me for an hour or two. <laughs> uh, until we see a fish jump, and then I might jump in the pool on you. <laughs> uh, so anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like the content, it, if you like hanging out with Schwartz, if you like my other videos, please smash that subscribe button. Um, I'm just trying to have some awareness for Atlantic salmon fly fishing in New Brunswick. Um, education and promotion of Atlantic salmon. Uh, and, you know, learning about the heritage, the tradition, uh, the culture that stands behind, you know, what's made this fishery so great, so amazing, so exciting uh, for over 200 years in New Brunswick. So. Anyways, thank you again for watching, guys. Smash that like button. Throw a comment in here. Um, it all starts with you guys. So I wouldn't be here without you. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. And we will uh, be chatting with you guys in our next episode on the side of the river.